This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1613. Sample Morning Routine for Sleep-Deprived Moms, part one, by Kara Harvey of apurposedrivenmom.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back again to Optimal Relationships Daily. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino, and between today and tomorrow, I'll be sharing a longer parenting post with you, courtesy of Kara Harvey, whose work we will be checking back in with. This post shares a sample morning routine for sleep-deprived moms, which I know a lot of parents could use. So let's jump right into part one of this article and start optimizing your life. Sample Morning Routine for Sleep-Deprived Moms, part one, by Kara Harvey of a mom.com. When you're a sleep-deprived mom, it can be hard to make any decisions, let alone what to do for a morning routine. You may feel lost in trying to keep up with your day-to-day demands. You're most likely in a mom brain fog as you navigate your mornings, and you really just have one goal, keep the tiny humans alive. But it doesn't mean that routines don't matter. Routines for moms are important. I've been there, and I can relate. My daughter didn't sleep through the night until she was about 15 months old. I got so much luckier with my son, who started around five months old. But Having them both on different sleep patterns made me realize how much sleep impacts our well-beings and our homes day to day. Why sleep is important for moms and babies. Obviously, it's key for us to get as much sleep as possible, but we know that doesn't always happen. Yes, my kids still sleep through the night, but their toddler sleep issues still suck my rest. My three-and-a-half-year-old is in a nightmare stage where she wants to sleep in our bed almost every night and my one-and-a-half-year-old has his toddler molars coming in, which results in screaming almost every night. On the nights that someone doesn't sleep normally, which in our home is 8 p.m. bedtime and 6 a.m. wake-up time, I feel a huge difference. I snap more at the kids, I start my day feeling behind, because if they didn't sleep through the night, I most likely hit my 4.30 a.m. snooze alarm and slept in with them, and I'm super short-tempered. Sleep is key for our mental well-being and health as a mom. After my son, I struggled with postpartum anxiety and depression, and it was at a time when his sleep was the most inconsistent. From when he was two months old to four months old, I found myself struggling. I wasn't getting my basic needs met with sleep, and it was taking a huge toll on my mental health. When my kids' sleep is interrupted, they are super cranky the next day. They're hungrier than normal, one of our body's coping mechanisms for being tired, and just not as pleasant to be around but we can't predict our kids' sleep patterns. And while we would love for them to sleep like angels, we know that they don't. So whether you're a newborn mom who feels like a zombie and sleeping in two-hour chunks if you can get them, a mom working out of the home and barely getting in sleep as you cram all of your home tasks into the night hours, or a mom who just isn't getting the sleep you need, I want to give you some tips on creating a morning routine perfect for the sleep-deprived mom. If you need help with your baby sleep, Go and grab the book Precious Little Sleep now. It is a lifesaver. Morning Routine Ideas for Sleep-Deprived Moms Even us tired moms need to have some sort of routine to keep our house going. And while I know you're probably rolling your eyes at me even talking about a routine when you could fall asleep standing up in the shower, trust me when I say that small tasks and habits you can add into your morning will make the rest of the day feel less overwhelming. When I talk about creating a morning routine, note that I don't mean a minute-by-minute schedule that you must always keep to. What I'm talking about are small habits you add into your morning that are predictable, help you get some time to take a breath when you need it, and create space and margin when you're feeling exhausted. Unfortunately, as moms, we can't always just let things go to the side because we're tired. Don't get me wrong. I've been known to crawl in bed with my toddler during nap to get a snooze or pass out on my infant's floor after they finally go to bed, but no matter how tired we are, some things we just have to get done. Our kids need to eat, clothes need to be cleaned, and we need to take some time for self-care. Any of the suggestions I give in this post are to be adapted for you and your family. Include and involve all the other people living in your home into the morning routine, and remember, Mom doesn't have to do all the chores. It's so key to have good communication with your spouse and family and let them know when you're struggling and where they can help. They aren't mind readers. So by saying the simple phrase, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with things right now, 
do you think you could XYZ, I'd really appreciate it, will go a long way. When I was struggling with postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression, I had so many moments where I refused to ask for help. I thought it made me look weak. I thought people would judge me or think that I wasn't a good mom. Or it would just irritate my husband being so needy. Note that these are valid thoughts, but not real. If you're struggling, please go seek help and ask for what you need. Sample morning routine for sleep-deprived moms of infants and toddlers. If your child is an infant, your morning may look much different than a mom of a toddler or a preschool-aged kid. They're less independent, but also less mobile. I found the toughest age when I was exhausted was 14 months to 19 months, where I am now. This is where my son is in everything, but also can't do much on his own. In the infant stage, babies are fascinated in swings, most love being in a baby carrier, and honestly, just don't do much. So, what could your morning look like? If you roll out of bed with baby, take a few minutes for you. I suggest keeping a swing or bouncer in your bathroom so you can have some hands-free time to brush your teeth and get dressed. Don't underestimate the power of putting on clothes that aren't pajamas. While you're doing this, turn on music, an audiobook, podcast, or something to get your mindset right. Find what gets you in a great mood and sets your soul up for success. I listen to a ton of personal growth throughout my day, and I used to think it was so hard to find time to do it. Then I realized how easy it is to just hit pause, turn the TV off for background noise, or listen in small chunks. Don't feel like because you can't sit and binge an audiobook for three hours that those five minutes while you brush your teeth and wake up don't matter, because they do. If you've never listened to an audiobook, give it a try. If you have a toddler, I really suggest aiming to get up even just 15 minutes before them. You can start tracking their sleep patterns and see what time they wake up on which days to have some sort of idea. For example, I know that my kids are typically up between 5.30 and 6. I know. So even when I don't get a great night's sleep, I set my alarm for 5.15 to at least have that time alone. If you can't get that time alone, still, take that getting ready time for you and let them hang with you. I keep a basket of books in our bathroom for my kids to look at or play with while I get myself going. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Sample Morning Routine for Sleep-Deprived Moms by Kara Harvey of apurposedrivenmom.com Okay, and thanks so much to Kara for a great beginning to this post. You know, I always champion common forms of self-care like this, Uh, Sleep, healthy eating, exercise, fresh air, time away from screens is a big one for me. I really believe keeping these things in balance goes a very long way. It sure does for me. But the thing is they're most likely to be put on hold when bigger life events feel too urgent. One of those obviously being parenting, especially parenting such a young child. So I really love that this article is providing a reminder that While we might have to push some items off of our schedules at times, base self-care needs should not be on that list. They are not an inconvenience, nor are they necessarily a luxury that we just don't really need. They fuel us to operate better and be our best selves when we need it most, which would certainly include times of stress and busyness, like raising a young child. So keep that in mind for those of you who let these things slip by the wayside thinking that they aren't as important as they are, they are very necessary, even if their benefits are, uh, I guess, slow but sure to reveal themselves. It's time to get going for today, though, everyone. So thanks for being here, and I will see you for part two tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.